I like don't poop chair in that too. chair. I like that chair, but Chris has pooped in it so many times, I just don't want to sit in it. Hello! <laughs> I'm Sam. That's Chris. That's Caleb. You notice the pause? It's because I... He stumbled on it. <laughs> Someday I'll He struggled. This. I got it right last week. Um, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Wait, uh, you're talking about our names? <laughs> yeah. I get to, I get to... Oh my it's god! Like I know who you guys are. Like I, I live with this one. And you're here because well, I'm not looking at you. So I just see. I just hear you say our names. So it doesn't matter to me. And Chris is like, "Oh, you got him right." I was like, "He's he's known us for years." He does what do you it. Mean? He does. He does it every time. I know. I screwed up a lot of times too. It's okay. In our uh, alien isolation video, I, I pointed out that he got my name right because I was the only other one playing the video True. with him. Yeah. I was True. like, "Yo, good, you got my name." You right. messed it up in the Caleb left the alien isolation video. He did. He just hey Caleb, off. do you want to do you want to tell our fans and friends and loved ones no nope, why you work in the alien isolation in video in case it doesn't work out? <laughs> <laughs> you could probably infer from that what he was doing. He was on a date. <laughs> so. Touch them butts. But um, do we want to? Yeah. Do we do that? Yeah, now, let's do, do that now. Do you want to do, do that, that now or you want to wait? Let's do that now. Are we talking about touching butts or what? Well, no, we're not. No. <laughs> do you, he do said you, touching butts. Do you want to touch said, my butt now. or do I get to touch your butt or do we touch our butts together? Can you both touch my butt? Like one on each? All right, here's, well, here's, no, here's what we do is <sighs> if we're touching butts, what you got to do is like the three of us in a triangle. And it's one cheek for each person. For each no, person. yeah, good call. You know what I'm saying? It's like cheek to cheek to cheek like to a, cheek. Like a butt illuminati, butt naughty, aluma buddy. <laughs> uh, the aluma booty. <laughs> I was thinking more like the pyramid on the back of the dollar, but at the top, but instead of the eye, it's just a butt. <laughs> it's just a butt. <laughs> but that's, just that was butt. my interpretation of it. My artistic rendition. Can you draw that for me, please? <laughs> can we be, be our new channel logo? Just, oh, <laughs> like, we can make that the like the all seeing. We can make the that butt. the logo is the the pyramid, which is like a just the, a all, the all seeing butt, the all pooping butt. Oh. Ooh, <laughs> that made both of us go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't know about that one. All right, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give that one a hard pass. So Chris and I have a fun announcement. We're firing Caleb. He's done. Well, actually, quite the opposite. You see. And this isn't, I don't think, something that's really stressed too often on camera, but Sam and I have kind of been the, uh, is your laptop plugged in, Sam? Uh, it has power to last, unlike our last couple of videos. You yeah. keep talking, I'll go plug my laptop okay, in just cool. in case. Okay, I'll, I'll, ex- I'll explain it. <laughs> well, we, we, we have a big announcement. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> it's worth it. I, just because you haven't seen it yet, Caleb. Um, we recorded for a little over an hour and a half in Alien Isolation, and... In the middle of the recording, Sam's laptop died. (laughs) (laughs) Right at a point where we were like with the alien in a room, too. (laughs) And I was like, oh, no. (laughs) Because, I mean, when uh, the Elgata's plugged in and the laptop is off, then we lose the feed to the TV. (laughs) So I'm in this room with the alien, and it just goes dark. I went, (laughs) (laughs) I was like, what happened? Well, here's the thing. My laptop was on full battery when we started, but using Elgato and then my laptop powers the the mic the, the mm. camera we use and getting like the mic input. It's just eats it's so battery. there's so much output. Yeah. But uh back to what we're saying, I didn't want to say it while you're off camera, Sam. Uh, is it's not just something that we that we stress in our videos too much, but Sam and I have always been the the sort of driving force behind save point. Is there a bug? <laughs> Oh no! Go on. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Sam and I have been the ones uh, running the. What? Don't do that. <laughs> go on with you. I will kill you. Go on with the announcement. <laughs> That's why I fixed the audio now. Have the mic like a freaking amateur. Uh, Sam and I have been the ones running the thing, and if you do something else, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> Where essentially it's just, it's just been us, and in all of our photos and everything, Save Point has been Sam and I with uh, essentially featuring Caleb. Yeah, well, no S, more. The S and S P stands for Sam, and the P stands for Poopy, which is what Chris is. I hate you so much. I hate you both. Sam, I don't do Sam and Poopy Productions. Sam, Sam. I know. Wait, wait a minute. I just I was you. off in my own world, anyways, and then <laughs> I you said that. This joke. This is just the worst announcement because I have to do it with the two of you. <laughs> but Caleb is, is 100% a part of Save Point now. He's going to be helping us in the production of our videos as well as the, the creative side of them. They say that like I have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I live there. You can see I have my own cabinet 
that they put me in. That's true. Um, you like, it's like Harry Potter. You just keep him under the stairs. <laughs> Dude, please. I'm not as rich as Harry Except Potter. we don't have stairs with a table. <laughs> the table's got a mattress. Uh, yeah. So welcome to Save Point officially. Caleb, we're very, very excited to have nice. you. Uh, Good. With 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 the addition of Caleb, we're gonna we're gonna have some new like promotional pictures taken and stuff like that, and we're gonna change all our banners yeah. and social it's media sites. Very good. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen within the next few weeks or so, but uh, sure. we're in the we're in the process. I think we mentioned this last podcast of uh, sort of restructuring the way that we no, we, I, we do I some things. I tried to mention it last podcast, and then you laid on the ground and started singing and like breathing heavily into the microphone, so I stopped. I don't know, I don't remember that. If you uh, watch the end of last week's podcast, I don't know what you're talking about. Chris kind of like off camera right there. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> and the mic, and you also hear Chris going. <laughs> Wait, are you talking <laughs> about when Chris that doesn't sound fell right. over and grabbed the microphone and started yes. going? Yeah, yeah. That doesn't sound. I don't. I don't know what Chris, you're talking you started about. to announce something. That sounds. That stop. sounds nothing like me. Uh, and I'm fairly certain we talked about that before then. Uh, but we're we're gonna be restructuring the way that we do certain things, and uh, we're gonna we've got a bunch of new content sort of in the barrel that we're kind of ironing out, and you know we're gonna have some new stuff. So I th- we're gonna finish up. We got one more spook point video, uh, Dying and, Light, which I'm so excited for because this Sam Sam's is playing this one, which Sam has not played any of them yet. Sam, oh, you played Dead Space. Played That's Dead right. Space. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played Alien, and then Caleb did uh, Resident, Resident Evil. Evil. Uh, Caleb and I have both played this. We're 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 having Sam play a particular Resident bit Weasel. of Dying Light as well, which is going to be great. Oh yeah, um, Resident Weasel. Are you okay? I was in his coffee. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've said in a while. We're gonna we're gonna fin- <laughs> we're gonna finish up Spook Point, and then going into November, we got a, a couple of normal episodes, and then uh, late November and early December in the hype for for the Last Jedi, we're gonna do lots and lots of Star Wars the content, Star Wars. which I am very very excited funny. about. Um, mostly because I was like, look, <laughs> I'm working on this channel. We're doing Star Wars stuff, <laughs> uh, so we're gonna do some Star Wars stuff soon, and then after that. Uh, I think the timeline currently is in yeah. later December, or maybe possibly even waiting until the uh, the new year. But we're gonna have lots and lots of yeah. new content and new things for you. Uh, and this is something else I'm very excited about. We're also <laughs> I'm heading up a, uh, yeah. a a video series that we're making specifically <laughs> for our patrons on Patreon, Ooh. which we're also <laughs> currently restructuring because when we set it up, we didn't know how the platform worked, and uh, that will Thanks, change. Jeff. That should be changed within the next week or so. So hopefully by the time this video goes up, we've actually changed our Patreon. If not, it'll definitely be up by the next podcast. Uh, yeah. But I'm going to start working on a video series that we're going to be doing for, uh, specifically for the people that donate to us on, on Patreon. And so uh, you'll get uh, lots and lots of really, really cool content, which I'm excited about. So, uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for the way that we're moving forward with Save Point. I think now that we've done this for a little over two months um we've really found sort of our, our we we got into the swing of things going back and watching our first videos is a little is a little weird because even even in the last month and a half we've already changed up a lot of, of, mm-hmm. of, of how we do this and we really found our humor styles and that sort of thing and so now i think we can really dig deep and, and start uh exploring some more uh, creative ideas that we have and i think it's gonna be really really cool i'm very very excited for the for this mm-hmm. this next bit Agreed. Also, I get to play Star Wars on uh, games on camera. And I'm so excited about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chris is just hoping that we get to December eventually. Battlefront is in 25 days. Yeah, oh. Star Wars. Last Jedi is in like four weeks, five weeks, five weeks, uh, maybe even six. I have all three of our tickets already. It's true. We're gonna go see it release night, 9:30 in IMAX, baby. Uh, it's funny because they, my, Chris was like, "Ooh, I got tickets for all of us same night." And I was like, "Heck yeah, man." Like, 30 minutes later, my dad texts me the same thing. Apparently, people just want me to go see Star Wars with them. That's the kind of friend I am, is I just go watch Star Wars. <laughs> my dad got me tickets, too, actually. Yeah. I'm going to go visit them that weekend. Which, I mean... So I'm going to see it that Saturday. <laughs> right, right. So, it's like, it's not a complaint. I'm just... It's just... That's what I am, is people yeah. just buy me Star Wars tickets. Yeah, my dad didn't get me Star Wars tickets. <laughs> oh. Sam, I'll be your dad. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> no. I'll buy you Star Wars tickets. I'll be your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more meant without oh. the... <laughs> you look like a talk right now. I already got you your Star Wars tickets. That's what you got to do, right? Sam is so Thanks, speechless. Dad. Can I get a pony? No problem, Wait, son. I owe pony. you money for that still. Uh, yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> I owe you money for it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm going to take it out of what you owe me for, for uh, internet. Yeah. Uh, 
Y- yeah. But what about what you owe me for electric? Whatever. Oh my uh, god, here we go. This is something yeah, that we're not going to talk about on camera. Go. <laughs> That's not something we're going to talk about on camera. I swear to god, it's like Scott, a it's got our appliance build on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Samoy Productions presents <laughs> Hey, did How we to pay your the taxes? Electric? Hey, did you pay me for electricity? Yeah, it was 150 bucks. <laughs> if we spent 150 dollars on electricity in a month, I I don't know, man. After we've got some proper lighting in here. Well, yeah, then, but for right now, that means that like every light in the house is running for the entire month. They're on a lot. Yeah. We have a tendency to leave on like four lights at a time. Um. Anyway. Gotta love Mother Earth. Video games and stuff. Just games and stuff. Do you guys have topics? I walked in this, but I've I've got one that I that I'm ready to talk about. But if you guys have stuff to What's talk about, what's up with Caleb's with Chris's topic? Okay. Even when I'm not doing the intro, I still see the names up. <laughs> <coughs> Everyone's coughing. That's compelling. Cough, cough point. Compelling well, I, I choked because you're funny. Mm. Looking. Um, yeah, you know. Hey, I wanted to talk about uh, your guys' opinions Which? on uh, eh. the shutdown. Eh. Uh, uh, rest in peace, uh, Visceral Games. Rip. Oh, who are they? Did you not hear about this, Kayla? What? I'm Dude. about to tear your heart out, dog. What did Visceral Games do? Because that Dead name Space. is very yeah, familiar. For you. Aww. Name, they made Dead Space. EA shuttered Dead Space. They are also they were working on a uh, single-player Star Wars game. Wait, which one? They, it has been a, it, they don't have a title for it It was yet. an Uncharted-style Star Wars game. Yeah, it was being, being written by Amy Hennig. Directed by Amy Hennig, I'm sorry. <sighs> who uh, did the first three Uncharted games. Really? Uh, she was also originally going to be... I don't know if you heard about this. I she, really was, liked it. she was on board for the fourth one, and they weren't... Uh, they, they had like a big falling out, Amy Hennig and Naughty Dog, did, oh, and she left and got picked up by Visceral. Right. Uh, <coughs> and so, yeah, the reason I'm talking about this is because people are lashing out at EA for, for mm. shuttering. And, you know, it's apparently because there's this one game uh, that's now been uh, canceled because EA uh, made a mm-hmm. statement saying that they wanted to, to shift from a, a, a linear single-player game and they're, they're going to look into a, another like, games of service style thing, uh, mm-hmm. sort of like a Destiny-like uh, Star Wars game. Uh, which, I mean, hey, that's cool. I mean, I can't blame them. That's where the market is. But, but people are lashing out at EA about this. They're very, very upset. Um, and it's apparently like doom and gloom for single-player games, which I don't think is, is true. Um and I, I was curious because I mean that's of course the immediate action is like uh, EA killed Visceral and they well, hate did. they hate single player games and, and they that's do. Like, which no and no uh, well because here's the thing is behind the scenes we just don't know what happened one Amy Henning no longer works at Naughty Dog because she was unable to meet deadlines we have no idea uh, we've been hearing about this single player Star Wars game for a very very long time and have seen almost nothing of it there's a very good uh, possibility that they just weren't meeting deadlines. And EA has shareholders to please. I can't blame sure, a business sure. for for making business decisions. You know, I, uh, I I like that argument as much as I hate it, to be honest. Because like it, it, and makes it sucks. Sense. It really does. Because I wanted to see that game. I love the Uncharted games, mm-hmm. and I do think there's a, a bit of a. Actually, I don't think there's a there's a lack in uh, single player games because most of the games that I played this year were single player. Resident Evil and Horizon and, and Uncharted, all these other games. Um, which so No that, Man's Sky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sing- single Sorry. player game. I never got the chance to get ah. that jab in. So we're g- ah. right. um, but, I, Wait, but I mean, and I'm not like trying... the least relevant year old game. <laughs> yeah, I was going right. say that was last time. Also, <laughs> one of our viewers got that joke. <laughs> okay. um, and so I'm not trying to be like a corporate apologist or anything. And I'm not super, and I'm still not super, super into EA or anything. I mean, and that really sucks that Visceral got shut down. And this is a Star Wars game that I really wanted that is just I'm no so longer anti happening. EA that everything they produce makes me wary. Like, that's, I despise EA. But, you know, that's just because they're business practice. I don't know. Some but people here's, have... This. Here's the thing, though, and a lot of people don't realize is they're still making really, really good games. Have you seen... And, they are. And, and, and it's, they're even, uh, I don't know if you said, they've started publishing uh, independent games as well. Mm-hmm. They, uh, they've got their own, like, uh, indie studio. Have you seen that that sweet new co-op game that's coming out next year? It's a uh, two-player, I think it's called A Way Out. It's where... Uh, you're uh it's a split yeah. game where you're in a jail and yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, an yeah. ea game really yeah because i've se- i've seen it <laughs> it's an ea published game in before loot boxes in before <laughs> way out micro trans- <laughs> it, it, way out micro transactions it says like buy the key to the prison <laughs> <laughs> 20 20 bucks key to there the are no micro transactions in any proper games that are that egregious i don't know chris refuses to roll with his joke he's like there's no there's no way <laughs> that would be like, that would be like getting madden and like for like a loot box, like a touchdown. It's like, you, it's like a dollar in game, you get a touchdown. Um, 
There are no games where microtransactions are that egregious. I uh, <laughs> I really liked the uh, Warner Bros. made Shadow um, Shadow of War Shadow of War, yeah. right? Um, I don't know, Apparently, you know, the loot boxes are just right. I actually kind of wanted to segue over to that. Is um, for my topic, I was going to discuss the um, uh, like. So obviously there was a huge the hype. prevalence of loot boxes. Wait a second, we haven't finished Chris's topic. Not even. What did you? Oh, we're sending anymore Chris's topic. Oh, what did you want? Well, I I, I, just... I think we've settled on, on where we stand. Is uh, my stand is there? I think there are both sides to this story. Mm. I don't. I don't. I mean, it's like the thing is, we just don't know what was going on with that with that Star Wars game and, and why they decided to 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 shutter the studio. But I refuse to believe that it was just because EA hates hates gamers and single player. No, games. yeah, totally. I I mean, I would give them the benefit of that there, but. You know, um, they they are, but I mean, it's, they did make the statement of wanting to move from a linear game to a games of services, basically, and they they basically said this without saying it uh, was that we we know we can make more money off of a game with well, microtransactions. That's literally why they would rather like. I don't think that's literally why because we don't. Uh, there's a very well, good chance, just given Amy Hennig's track record, that they were not meeting but uh, how, where they were supposed to be. Especially since I don't know if you know this, we were already supposed to have a trailer for this game, and we've got nothing. How often does a project like that tra- change hands? You can change directors on a game without f- literally it's not just the cutting direct- a studio and It's not just the people. director. And here's the thing, is that game is still happening, but it's being uh, transformed in this thing. It's been given to another studio. Is it really still happening? Like, if, if I... It's a different game because it's turning into a game of service, but what I'm saying is is so that, uh, is so that they, they probably were not meeting milestones, so they're looking at it and they're like, we're putting lots of money into this that we're probably not going to get way. a good return off me, of because it's a play well, listen, listen. kind of like, game. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? It's, but, they have okay, shareholders. EA they puts out these great games, and they make yeah. a lot of money, and that's great. But, like... Then you have companies like Naughty Dog, who has had their questionable moments, and then like uh, see- yeah, some some uh, some some sexual abuse allegations, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. And then like CD well, Projekt Dog. Red, obviously, Witcher Three, you know, they're like hailed by the community because they make these games that are so good, yet don't have those like money. I think schemes. they're overrated, by the way. I don't at all. Uh, I, what? As companies, I don't think they're overrated no, CD, at CD all. No, CD Project Red specifically. I thought, How? I, I thought Richard, Witcher What's 3 was overrated. Witcher 3 is a once-in-a-lifetaGame. game. I thought it was overrated. You know what? I like it very okay, much. I thought the combat was super clunky and it was hard to get into. I thought it was janky once, as hell. I hated moving around in the game. Is I wasn't into it. Um, I really liked the world and like and what you thing, can do once you get into well, see, it. Here's, here's the difference between CD Projekt Red and EA. Is that EA, honestly, CD Projekt Red makes a lot of the same decisions that EA does. CD Projekt Red is better about being transparent about these sorts of things, whereas EA is not, but CD Projekt Red is also independently owned. They don't go to anyone else through publish, uh, for publishing, whereas EA is literally a, a publisher with, with these games. And, uh, I mean, you can't really say a lot of stuff because then that puts liability on in places where you don't want liability in. <laughs> CD Projekt Red can come out and say, hey, we messed this up. Here's what, what we're going to do and fix it. EA can just be like, we want to make sure you have the, the best things. We're working on it. It's two completely different situations, which, yes, I am very, very sad that we're no longer getting a linear uh, single-player game. But uh, judging from what employees have been saying about this Star Wars game, that it wasn't uh, getting to where it needed to be to the point where money was going into it too much to where if they released a uh, game that uh, gamers you know, spent sixty dollars on and never put any more money into. They were not going to get a good enough return for the thing. Okay, they've but what about games like, like, like four years. Cuphead and like Undertale that sell for <laughs> twenty to ten dollars? Well, I'd say. Well, here's the thing: is you got to look at. Uh, there's a lot less assets used in that game, which means there's a lot less people working. Okay, on it. but like, do you know the, how the big pe- Visceral Games is? That's over three hundred employees. But what I'm saying is the respect. The respect that was garnered for. But that was that's still like a twelve man studio. Regardless, I'm saying it like the respect that was garnered for them as a company because of their production of the game and its quality, and their their like it's a single player game that you can get into that, that they obviously put care and time into. I understand that. Like, the, why the can't is, EA the, do that? And the studio that made Cuphead is independently. Owned. This is what I'm trying to get at. The studio that made Cuphead is independently owned. EA has shareholders and people that are putting money in this thing. To and work. I don't like that. But that's just a company. <laughs> that's how that works. But, but and I don't and, and I'm saying I don't EA, like and we don't like EA for that reason. As a side note, EA makes enough money between the FIFA and Madden games that they can afford if they really cared about gamer community and making a great product. Hold up, don't say anything. Give me a <laughs> second. I can see you. If Ruminating. They, if they genuinely cared fireball. about making a great product, they could afford to make a a game that's a great single player Naughty Dog style like that. Like narrative, linear, like 
10 to, shh, shh, let me finish 10 12 hour <laughs> narrative game they they could easily afford to make it they still make money off of it maybe not as much as like a battlefront 2 they still make good money off of it and the company is not hurting for money they're still going to turn a profit we're not talking about a game that's going to lose them money we're talking about a game that won't make them as much money that's why i'm going to disagree with you did you see the numbers on uh they just recently published a bunch of numbers for dead space 2 they lost four million dollars on that game okay but that's but that is a that is dead space. i understand we're talking about a star wars i understand game. that but that's the thing is dead space is exactly the <laughs> format that they were going to release star wars in what they're looking at is they're probably putting more money into star wars and then realizing this has not worked for us in the past this is not where the market is right now but looking at looking because at, it's not but look star at the wars, numbers destiny and all in ghost recon and, and all these other games I am just trying to justify. I'm not saying I don't think EA is evil and out to get uh, gamers, which is a lot of things that people are saying. They are a business who made a legitimate decision. Yeah, but like the end of the day, the way that they treat it sucks, and I don't like it. I get that. Well, okay, but the the same people who are saying you know like that they're evil, blah blah blah, also have that opinion too. It sucks, and they don't like it, and they want to actually make it. A change as a company so they don't buy their products and so they don't uh, support them as a company. And that's fine. You can do that. But here's the thing is, and, and there are a lot of people that are actually now refusing to buy Battlefront 2 because of what they did for Visceral. But I was like, no, because I'm sitting about Battlefront 2 1 because I want to play Battlefront 2. But also because I have a lot of respect for Dyson Motive Studios. At the end of the day, EA is just the publisher. They're not the ones creating the games. Uh, you see, I lose respect and for so, Dyson so, they put like loot box system. Like, that's an EA thing. Publishers say you can make the game, but it's got to have these things in them. EA went to Dice saying we need to we need to have this in our game because that's where the market is and that's where we're going to get a lot it's of the return on our it's investment where, into this is. game. It's where EA forces the market to go. A game doesn't. EA didn't invent loot boxes, but what Blizzard is, basically did. What I'm saying you is, can thank Blizzard and well, Overwatch yeah, for loot boxes. I have my problems with Blizzard and other themselves, but what I'm saying is you don't have to say the market is there. Game like Cuphead as an example. Cuphead is a, a well-loved, super well-selling game. It's a completely different situation for Cuphead. Okay, how about point. let's go Witcher 3? Why can't, Witcher 3 why of... can't EA make games that like don't necessarily need to have that level of production? I don't fucking know. Go ask them. Well, but I don't like them <laughs> as a company, though. That's the thing is like, okay. Because they don't create I would the rather... games. They publish them. It's a, Like I'm saying, it's a different situation. If DICE came out and said, and, and said, we're publishing our own game. By the way, we just canceled this thing. We're adding loot box and all this stuff. I would not buy that game because I understand that it's EA publishing and that allows but it to, EA to do that is, thing. EA is making them put that shit in their game that, that doesn't end up being good and enjoyable. If you like DICE so much, why doesn't DICE do their own thing? EA owns them. Well, then, then, they're, then they're EA. So you say you respect... Like I respect EA. I respect the people at Dice because the people that work at Dice are the the creators, the artists, the ones that are putting the passion and that sorts of things into the game. They I just don't think it should EA. cost a hundred dollars for a single player game because that's becoming a trend these days. Is oh you buy the forty dollars season pass and then like they don't pay for it. Then like a year later, yeah. But then so the like 60- Witcher three didn't they have like a thirty dollars expansion? But that's dude. Like, that is not. The, it's a full I, game. I will tell Blood, you. Blood and Wine is a thirty-hour game. It's not the I'm same. I'm just saying that's the same. That's, it's that's not, same it's literally a game. It's Witcher Four. It's Blood, like a Blood standalone. Blood and Wine is literally a standalone. It would be game. comparable to like uh, Far Cry the the Blood Dragon or whatever. Primal. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. the no 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 no. no, no. Blood Far Cry. No. Blood Dragon. Far Cry. Cry the, Blood Dragon was like six hours long. It's not. But, but I know. Like, I know what you're saying. So, I know what you're saying. It's like a different. I know what you're saying. Is it is Blood and Wine as boring as Witcher Three? <laughs> Chris, I love you so much. <laughs> I, I, I I understand that hey, popular opinion. Now that I'm, but I, now I, just, that I'm I guess I just want to. Uh, everyone, one, shut up. One second, now, please, everyone one second, please, that... one second, please, one second. I just I want to say this so we can move on to the next topic. Because uh, I mean, I'm looking at the time. Hey, now that I'm on the show officially, can I spill beer in your carpet? <laughs> you, already, no. you already did that. Uh, I did. No, I didn't. It's your beer on the carpet. Uh, okay, that's not the same thing. I understand as me that spilling I. Beer. <laughs> You didn't. You didn't work here. Therefore, you've spilled it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're more or less the intern now. That's, <laughs> oh my god! Uh, 
basically i just want to say this i'm going to say this <laughs> and then we're going to move on there i, res- I respect uh you guys opinions and, and and your reasons for feeling that i just wanted to see because it's not something that a lot of people have considered is that uh the the actual developers for a lot of these games are the ones that are that it's creators they're, they're the artists and that sort of thing and there's a sort of movement of business versus art which is unfortunately where video games are is you have to have that business side in order to support the artist side of things and a lot of times that that doesn't go either way there are lots of games that didn't happen that i wish did especially when it comes to the star wars license and unfortunately it doesn't look like we're going to get a good single player star wars game until ever hey no, maybe well, uh, ea only players. has a license for about five more years Titanfall uh, which, two? which means we're most likely going to get uh which Titanfall two was a fantastic game that's an ea and game the, and the, well and the creators are going to Respawn is currently working on a Star Wars well, game. Well, yes. Titanfall 2 is a fantastic game if you want that kind of... It's a very, very, very specific kind of game. I will say in EA's defense... Hold audience. on. I will say in EA's defense... A first-person shooter? They, you look at, like, Battle a multiplayer only well, listen, first-person shooter. No, it's you, got a campaign. You look a at some... Game. A fantastic campaign at that. You call a six, uh, seven-hour campaign EA's earlier short? developments are a lot more scummy than their more recent things, and I think it's because of the flack that they've gotten from the community, quite frankly. I think that the community has pushed back to the point where they're willing to be like, okay, uh, maybe we should make the Battlefront 2 DLC not $20 a pop when it's going to be like, you know, five hours of gameplay. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, they also looked at what they did with the first Battlefront, and they're like, all right, well, they want all these things. Let's give them prequel era stuff. Let's give them sequel era stuff. We're going to make all the expansions free. Like, the sort of thing is they're willing to do that sort of thing if the community comes out. But and basically, this is, what I'm, this is what I'm going to say, and we're going to move on to the next I topic. Agree is that there are lots of people shouting EA hates gamers and EA is even all this stuff and they're not and I and I refuse to 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 see that I understand the decision they made hmm. I'm not a fan of it but I get it they're a business and they have uh requirements that they have to hit and that's just the reality of it is that although we want these things uh the, these you know beautiful creative artistic whatever's but it still has to be funded by a corporation at the end of the day for something uh, on this scale of a game there's a reason why ea's e3 press conference every year is look at our new madden game everyone all 10 people in the audience clap Right, you know like, how much you know how much damn money they make I on the Madden that. games. I, but really like, I, game. that's the point. I don't want it to be about fucking money. <laughs> They're a business. All of these companies are businesses and have to continue uh, make sure that they can continue making that revenue. But if they look at something <laughs> like Cuphead or Undertale, they uh, you got to realize that they're putting these resources into it, and they've they're selling it in a model where they will continue to stay profitable. Mm. I have, I have, I, I, if you don't mind, I want to delay your topic to the third topic. My topic, and is that's short. it. I don't like, I don't like that they that they covered it. I don't think that they're even they made a business decision that sucks. I loved Visceral Games. They made some wonderful stuff. Not only did they make the Dead Space games, they made the Lord of the Rings games in the early two thousands that I really, really liked. They made Two Towers in Return, right? They made Two Towers in Return of the King and the Third Age. Uh, the Dead Space games yeah. were masterpieces, and I'm sure this this next Star Wars game uh, would have been awesome. But there are things that we just don't don't straight know about. And EA didn't look at this game and said, "Ew, this is a single player game. Cancel it." Mm. That's all I'm. Uh, that's all I'm trying to say. I'm and I don't push, see that. I don't see that view represented. So my my topic. Uh, is, I'm gonna. If you don't mind if I cut You're in? Fine. And do second. That's it, fine. It's, it's I, I do have. But that's fine. Go ahead. It piggybacks right off of this. Uh, so you said a second ago that I, you don't consider a six or seven hour long campaign short. So here's my here's my question mm-hmm. for a single player in a ca- campaign in a game: How long is long enough? Because here, here I'm gonna let me elaborate. Well, I was about to say I have an answer already. Because for instance, I've been because I'd, I'd say it depends on the genre. For of about six months, I've been working on Persona Five. It's a hundred hour long game, which is ridiculous. A long freaking game. I think, but people like that. The best length game I think I've played this year was Horizon. I beat Horizon in a little over thirty good. hours. I thought Horizon was a little too long, honestly. See, it's that to me, but I want thirty hours. I, I, I didn't pay you. I played your copy of Horizon, but if I'd <laughs> spent sixty dollars on Horizon for an open world game like that, I hope I can get thirty hours out of an open world game. I think, again, it depends on the game that that you're playing. I don't want a forty hour first person shooter campaign. That but would why? be, uh, it gets repetitive after a while. Uh, it's, you have to play to the strengths and weaknesses of a, of a gameplay. Can you imagine playing Call of Duty for the like, uh, campaign for 40 hours, playing that freaking whack-a-mole of a the, campaign for 40 but, hours? But like, like the Destiny campaign? If Destiny was a single-player only Destiny game, campaign was like 10, no, 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 10 no. hours. But hear me out. I never once was bored during Destiny 2's campaign. 
If they made that, that's because they paced it very, very well. But the thing is, if they made that thirty hours, I would get tired of that. I would never get tired of that. I would. I could easily play thirty hours of Destiny Two, a single player campaign. The thing is, they have to make a story that that fits properly both with the gameplay of the game and the story that they're trying to tell. I played plenty of games that were too short. Played plenty of games that were too long because they they'd sit in particular areas. Like, look at freaking Final Fantasy Fifteen. Too long. Entirely too long. The story drags on in bits. It was not paced well. I would push back, but it was not paced well. You can agree with me on it that. It wasn't written well. I don't know as far as, far as the pacing. The pacing was okay. It was written. It was not paced well. I had no problem great. with the writings. Uh, I had no problem with the writing. The pacing was bad. But I mean, you look at Resident Evil Seven. That's like a seven to eight hour campaign at most. I think it's longer than that. No, you can you can get through in eight hours easy. If you're good, I think like you're uh, someone's first time through probably ten hours. If you're if you're a wuss like me, <laughs> it'll take you. It'll, if I think hours, I think it, forward. I think it took me nine, but that's because I was scared. Because uh, I mean, I've seen you know people run through it in like four to five hours. I don't have an issue with. Uh, in fact, I I almost prefer my games to to be around that seven to twelve hour mark at least in shooters like first person games that sort of deal because uh then the story gets a little long in the tooth i get tired of doing things and i just don't want to come back to them uh there were there were points there were points in her eyes and where i was like all right let's hurry this up and it's like it really all comes down to pacing so uh i'm glad you brought this up actually because uh kotaku recently posted an article saying that uh the star wars battlefront 2 campaign is going to sit around the 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 seven to nine hour mark uh, and I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. I'm okay with it. Um, I do think replayability is kind of a factor, too. Because sometimes it's nice to... Like, it's also, at, it's also like, a like multiplayer-based game, though, is the thing. Uh, having a campaign at all is... is yeah, that's sure. great. But, I mean, a lot of people apparently hold the original Battlefront 2 uh, as, like, the standard of all Star Wars games. But that campaign was not good. It was fun for a little while. And it got a little too long, but I mean, it was just, you were playing on the multiplayer maps a bunch. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't any different than the multiplayer. You just got a cutscene before so and after each match. The, the, the point you keep going back to, though, is this idea that you don't want long, particularly shooters. I, Shoot, don't, shooters, I don't like to be very long. Can you let me finish a point? I'm agreeing. Well, yes, but you keep, let me finish a point. You do that to me all the time. The Constantly, I'm The point up. is that shooter you keep you keep bringing really up with that shooters you don't want them to be too long you think they can't do stories Correct. what if you give a 15 hour shooter mm-hmm. what if the last of us is a first person game same story same everything first person that was like 12 hours so the last of us about a 15, about 14 15 hour game last of us yeah it was a, it was a, it was a, I mean, like, long. okay, like, the difference of three hours over 12 to 15, it doesn't really matter. Just, it but, wasn't very long, is my point. But but you said, like, you... But I wouldn't want it to be. But what I'm saying is, you said a first-person shooter, like, it, your whole point you're keeping back to is the idea that a first-person shooter story would get old. What if they well, gave well, that's, it Well, that's what a, we're talking about. Okay, great I think story. the question shouldn't be, like, is the length what matters, or is the substance of the length what really matters, you know? Yeah. But I guess... There you go. Because Borderlands is first-person <laughs> shooter. It was, like, 30 hours long. I loved it. Yeah, I played the hell out of both. I don't games. Know why I didn't do that. There, there was like that satisfaction purpose in Borderlands Two, where you could like loot and shoot and everything, and you know. But it really, it really does, to, it like, really does come down to a cool substance factor. And... Where the thing is, is about uh, most games that that brag about their their long time is they get padded out with stuff that doesn't matter. But like, why are, why do we accept Black Ops every couple of years? Where it is just the a reskin multiplayer, tweaked the physics a little bit. I would actually even new, say like, that we Black Ops actually had one of the best campaigns in the entire Call of Duty series. Black, Black Ops, Ops was cool. Three. I think you're just saying Call of Duty in a, in a general sense, right? Yeah. Call of Duty, I guess. Also Call of Duty in a general sense. It's so Call of Duty. Actually, I heard, I heard very good things about Infinite Warfare's campaign. I I think Call of Duty's kind of died, to be honest. Oh yeah. Here's, um, it, except that it hasn't because it still makes money. It has its players. Women money. It has its players who play it religiously, and it's still. I'm sure it's a great game. But that's but not like, the point of Call of Duty, right? The point is just to like have that social aspect. To be yeah. honest, well, I mean, Call of Duty is very much. A, I, I'd consider it a multiplayer shooter that has a mm-hmm. campaign in a, in in a similar fashion that Tomb Raider, for instance, the re, the the recent reboot. Tomb Raider is a single player campaign that has a multiplayer mode in it. Nobody cares about the multiplayer because you play that game for the single player. Some but like it's the last, there. Like the Last of Us. Yeah, but the Last of Us multiplayer was surprisingly good. That, good that one, that one, that one threw me off a little bit. That one threw me off a little bit because I, I, I went into Last of Us uh, multiplayer fully expect to be tacked on like most multiplayer games and single player games are, and uh, that one is actually really really cool. But even like, but I consider Last of Us <laughs> the exception to the rule. Like I guess 
I, I asked the question a couple podcasts ago of like with food, what like what food would you not eat if you were gonna die? <coughs> How short of a campaign will you not buy a game if it's that short? Like people ragged on the order eighteen eighty six. It had about an eight hour campaign, and it was eviscerated for not being long enough. Well, it's also it just it wasn't very good. But that was one of the one of the huge complaints you hear about it that it was such a, sh- such a short campaign. Really, I, th- I, I think, think eight hours is stretching it. You I, th- I think it sat around the four to five. I, it mark. probably ends up what it honestly probably ends up having to be is a balance between like cost. Of but, the, like price of the game, but also what I played at Order eighteen eighty six was boring content. It just had no substance. Length. But how, how? Guess for you, how do you determine? How do you determine? Yes, I will, or no, I won't spend money because it's just at this point the relative price of video games on the current market. Like how much I'm willing to spend on a game of X length. Basically, I have to do research into it. I mean, I'm, Based off I'm, of like I'm, pro- what you I'm could probably going to get, gonna get Assassin's Creed game, Origins, which you know. I will probably spend around thirty hours in Assassin's Creed Origins, which is fine. That's what I want from the game. Oh yeah, but like, I, I, wouldn't I don't. I don't have an issue with long games. games. What I have an issue is uh, with games that uh, try to be long and then pad them out with nonsense, you know, irrelevant bullshit. I mean, that's that's the Final Fantasy model to some extent. Exactly. I don't like doing that. Don't put fluff in your game just to give it another ten hours. Um, tell me the story you want me to tell me. If it's a good story, I'll play it. Titanfall 2 got praised for its story, and you can finish it in like five hours. I did. It was awesome, and I have no regrets about buying that because it was a well-told story. Well, that's why we were talking about Witcher earlier. Every single side quest in Witcher 3 is like is memorable and meaningful. <coughs> Would you agree with that? That like some of the most memorable side quests. There were like, some funny ones, like you know, find the woman's frying pan. Too bad like, they're not. It fun almost to play. felt like it was a meme that was in the game. Like, help me find my frying pan. Use your Witcher senses to like. <laughs> like that kind of idea where it's like. Too bad they're not fun to play. It's oh my god! I'm gonna actually <laughs> kill you. What I'm saying is, or that <laughs> I'm just, I'm just ragging. I understand why people like the Witcher games. It's just the combat's not for me. You can dump 80 hours into that game, <laughs> and none of it is fluff. Yeah, uh-huh. it's. I understand that. I I 100 respect that. I don't. I I'm playfully poking at the Witcher. I don't oh, actually yeah. have a problem but, with it. The combat wasn't. It wasn't for me. I felt it was a little clunky, so I didn't play it. And I like to poke fun at you guys to get it right. Well, my question is like, why can't we have more games like that? Where it is, if you want to, you can put 80 hours into it, but no fluff. That's hard to do. Uh, but, see, see, do you know, I mean, look at. I mean, they crew. they developed Witcher three for like what six years, something like that. That's a long time. That's a long time to be working on a game with, with, with no other sources of income. What else? That is a legitimate question I've had is how CD Projekt Red made money while making Witcher 3. That's a really good question. I have no idea. I mean, Witcher, Witcher, 2, Witcher was, 2 sold decently. Witcher 2 did sell decently. Yeah. I mean, that's cool, but I mean, a lot of that... We're also talking like console jumps, too. I legitimately have no idea how they managed to put the time in Witcher 3 they did while also developing for new technology and then you know keeping everyone fed. No Excuse wait. Me. For six years... Not a soul. It might not actually be that. I don't actually know. I'm not. I'm not a huge Witcher fan. I couldn't tell you. This is an angry podcast. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit. It's a little bit <laughs> argument driven, but that's okay. I'm fine. <laughs> topic time. I'm fine. I feel good. It's my topic. It's your friggin' topic. But I mean, to oh God, to, to answer you, your question, it, Sam, because I, I don't think I don't think we gave an actual question. Uh, answer your question. I just think it it comes down to uh, the quality of the content within the game. Okay. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I'm not T- Titanfall Two had a very very short campaign that was very very good. Uh, however, I, I'm a big fan of the Assassin's Creed games, which are traditionally longer games. And so I don't have an issue with uh, I, I don't care how long like yeah you're, like one way or another games are with my schedule and stuff. I kind of prefer slightly shorter games, which is why I, I mean I'm not a big JRPG fan to begin with. But I would never consider picking up Persona Five because you got to have play a hundred hours just game. to get through the base storyline of a game, which I'm not about. I mean that's. The the way it's structured, there is like nothing after. Like it's, it's not like base it's, it's, story. It, no, sides. it's linear. I get it. But it's I get it. That's I mean that's why I tend to lean more towards games like uh, like Horizon or Uncharted mm-hmm. or that sort of thing. Things right. with things that tend to lead on lean on the 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 shorter side, but uh, tell a very good story. <sighs> Horizon is so. But weird. I do like multiplayer games. I'm very excited for Battlefront too. I played. I've been playing a lot of Fortnite. <laughs> we haven't played a lot. <laughs> so um yeah. So my topic. Uh, yes. Talking about Shadow of War and stuff. That's what it's called, right? Shadow of War. Shadow of War, yes. Um, Shadow of War. So, Technically, it's called Middle Earth Shadow of War, but I'm mean, like, semantics. Okay, Shadow so of in Middle Earth Shadow of War. Um, <laughs> it doesn't Shadow actually. That's a lie. 
You have uh, the hype train that started back with um, the first announcement of the game. Mm -hmm. Same thing with like Red 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 Dead Redemption Two. Like people hear about it and they go off the deep end, which I'm kind of scared about, honestly. Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, me too. But but regardless, Rockstar doesn't make bad games. Uh, no. Rockstar also milked GTA V for the past eight years. They also they also promised a single player uh, Anyways. expansion, which has not come out. And I get the feeling they're going to heavily lean in on uh, Red Dead Redemption's online and uh, forego the single player again. Anyways, um, the uh, what I want because then what happened right after that is all of the controversy that occurred, mm-hmm. and there was like a hype train that followed that. Mm-hmm. And now we get the game, and it actually ends up not being that bad. The mm-hmm. loot crates or whatever are fairly inconsequential, mm-hmm. and people are like, "Oh, wait, this isn't that much of a problem." So, yeah. just as far as hype train goes, I was curious as to guys' um, like opinion or your own personal hype trains that you have sure. that you think even like it's time to like reel back in. Maybe I had to. I had to after uh, Battlefront 2's scare. Because, I mean, I'm obviously a very big Star Wars fan. <laughs> He's going to refer to that for the next couple of weeks as the Battlefront 2 scare. <laughs> the great scare of 20... The great Battlefront 2 scare of 2017. Oh, Sam, don't say that. <laughs> that, was, that was weird. Um, yeah, I mean, I had to... After realizing that the loot crates in Battlefront 2, for instance, were, were going to actually uh, grant abilities uh, in-game, I was like... Ooh, that could be really, really bad for balance. And then I played the beta, and it turns out they're almost inconsequential. It's basically like having a, a flash grenade instead of a frag grenade on your assault class or something <laughs> like that. I was like, I, d- I didn't, I hardly touched them. I didn't notice a difference. It's fine. Um, but I, I do think that it's very easy for for hype trains to go in either one direction or, or the other, uh, in both a good or bad. I mean, shout out or I'd say win in a bad one, and then all the people that are playing the game are like, no, this game is really, really good, but there's still a lot of people going like, well, uh, shout out or is microtransactions, it sucks. And then you have like uh, the Reddit hive mind and everything, and because because just the way that Reddit functions. Oh with the yeah, have you been on the the Destiny subreddit recently? No, it's awful. They all hate the game. Cancer, really? They yeah. all hate the game. And I can't figure out why. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, it's, everyone is. All they do is say how much better Destiny One is than Destiny Two, and just crap on it. Which I'd say is objectively false. Yeah, Destiny, Destiny 2, Two is, is so good. Great game. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really you just you got to learn to to, to temper yourself. I um, mean, you, you know, do research into things that you enjoy. Figure out why you like them, and if you realize that you know a game is doing something that you're not necessarily into, then maybe that's not the game for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Tim? I will answer this in terms of a different community, a community that I would argue I probably know a little better than the gaming community, which is the anime community. Oh, boy. Which every couple of years, uh, there's, it's, it's been every year for the last four or five years, there's been some show. Yeah. Uh, it started with Sword Art Online in 2012, Attack on Titan 2013. Attack on Titan's so good. Uh, I forget what 2015 was. Was One Punch Man 2015 or 2016? Uh, 15. 2015, 15. right. Yes, One Punch Man 2015, My Hero Academia 2016. I have heard a lot about that show. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. It's it's the best show in anime maybe ever. Top three or four show in anime all the time. It's incredible. But anyway, what I'm saying is that in this community, you have a lot of hype around like one or two shows every year that just like sure. basically everyone watches it. Yeah. And you'll have you'll end up with like the Sword Art Online, which both Caleb and I have watched all of Sword Art Online. Well, because like the the show itself is really interesting. Bad. I mean, there are some. <laughs> I use the term interesting. There are some <laughs> points where it's kind of questionable, to it's be bad. honest. It's not good. It's got some bad parts, I but that's you, okay. I thought you guys liked Sword Art Online. No, I... It is... What happened? How do we... I will always watch. Whatever they put out for that show, I will watch. I will eat it up. But it's not good. It's like how, like... I, like, can't, I can't process that. Your fiancé was watching that freaking trashy show. Uh, uh, Project Runway. Yeah. Okay, I think if Brittany sat down and seriously was objective about it, she would say, yeah, it's a trashy show. Oh, she, she does. She, under, she understands why she likes it and dislikes it. Yeah. Sword Art Online. Watch, Sword Art Online. Anyway. Here's the thing. I sit down, I watch it with her, and I'm like, ooh, I like that designer. Sword Art <laughs> Online is a trashy show okay. that's enjoyable. So Sword Art Online is your, uh, like, The Bachelor. Yeah, it's like the ba- – do you agree with that? It's like The Bachelor it's or the like- anime version of Project what, Runway. That, that show that you drink wine to and go and like, ooh, I'm watching Sword Art Online. What was that right. show that Snooki was on? Jersey Shore? Yeah. It was no, like, there are like- lines. It's like <laughs> – There are limits, Sam. But anyway, so that community tends – so I guess hype is good or bad because like with Sword Art Online, you have to either love it or hate it. Like you aren't allowed to have like a differing opinion. No. So I think hype trains have some advantages. What about didn't watch it? 
Well, yes, but in the, the in the community that hated oh, all sure, of it. Sure, sure, sure. So hype trains have their advantages. One Punch Man, amazing. Was yeah, it's a great show. Wonderful. Deserves the hype train. So I, I I like them in some ways, but in other ways, like they can be divisive. Off track. A completely different studio is doing season two, and I'm so sad about it. Different director, different full staff, from different animators. Yeah, it's, it's not going to look as good as season one. It's, it's just not different staff. I uh, well, I may or may not. Well, it's because I. Uh, Bones tends to not make sequels ever, which is why they're not yeah. doing it. But anyway, um, also, as a side note, my personal hype train right now uh, would probably be Naruto. Nino Kuni 2. Oh. Nino Kuni. Oh, and your name coming on. The game that's Blue. never happening. Nino Kuni 2. Uh, <laughs> release date set for January 19th. Uh-huh. Pre- for, like, what, the third time? I have it pre ordered <laughs> on Amazon, uh, the deluxe edition, because of an art book. It's December. They're going to roll around stuff. and delay it until March. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, Nino Kuni too, and you ever you, you never played the first Nino Kuni, did you? Nope. It's the all it's Studio like, Ghibli Pokemon. Yeah, Studio Ghibli does all they they changing the combat system for two, but it's Studio Ghibli. You collect monsters and you fight them. You don't in two, in two it you do the like fighting a good yourself. Game. I could get behind this. It's literally unplayable. <laughs> yeah, Studio Ghibli does like a lot, most of the cutscenes, like the, the full art style, and like <laughs> just kidding. It's like, it's, it's, it's like playing a, a Ghibli movie. That sounds cool. I mean, Amazing. considering your respect for Ghibli movies, understandable. It's really good. But it's really good. It's a gorgeous game. Mm-hmm. I agree. Have you ever thought what it would be like to like control characters and like spirit it away? That's what it's like. I never did think about that, but uh, now I have, and I can't <laughs> have unthought that thought, so thank you. You're welcome. What's your personal hype train right now? I can't. Yes, Chris, I can't have unthought that thought. No, yeah, I worked it out. <laughs> I don't want to. Oh geez, personal hydrain for me. <coughs> Probably Honestly, I'm just on the Star Wars hype train all day. You, every day. You two nerds. Freaking nerds. All day, every day. You're calling us nerds and you're just talking about your anime hype train. <laughs> anime. Nerds. I could probably got more into the anime than Sam's weed. in high school. But uh yeah, probably. But uh, yeah, definitely Star Wars. It's just like been such a part of my family and everything for the past so many years. As in like the movie or just in general? Oh, like, like I thought you were. I thought you were making fun of me. No, like, no, no, oh, because no, no. there's like, tons of Star Wars stuff coming out. Yeah, because it's more like you a can't just say Star Wars. It's so many now. things now. Yeah, but you mean you have the Star Wars like Disney World edition that's coming in? Did you see the announcement about the hotel? What? They're adding a Disney hotel or the Disney hotel. They're adding a oh, Star like Wars resort. <laughs> they're adding a Star Wars resort to Disney World. Awesome! All of the people are going to be in character. That like all of the staff are in character and their storylines depending on what room you stay in. That's it's gonna sweet. be amazing. Is that where you and Brittany are spending your honeymoon? It won't be built by the time we go will out. Will you there, be in the, the Han and Leia suite? It will it will not be built until right before episode nine, which isn't until twenty nineteen. I'll high five you for that stupid joke. Yeah, absolutely. The Chewy and an Ewok suite. <laughs> That's not, that's not an image I want in my brain. <laughs> you see, like, like a four foot no. tall, like. No, I don't. please stop describing. I don't, don't, don't finish see. that sentence. I don't see it. Do not finish that sentence. Um, can I? Can I like really quickly add one more question that I want you guys to answer? Yeah. yeah. Your top three or four Star Wars fights, because Chris and I have had this conversation via text a oh, bunch of times. Top three Star Wars fights, like so, light, lightsaber, lightsaber fights. fights. Oh. Uh, Chris will go first because. Well, why don't you go first since you're the one starting? Episode right. three, uh, I mean, you have the Duel of the Fates top of all time, and then you have uh, everything else. The one in the Death Star between Luke and Darth Vader at two, and I'm, I'm going to be the one the disagreeing re- with these two again. <laughs> the Revenge of the Sith at three. Wait, you just said Luke versus Obi Wan at the top, and then said you put Revenge of the Sith at three. That's the no, same no, fight. At, at the top, um, not to, Duel of the Fates. Wait, is that that's Darth Maul and yeah, that's, Darth that's, Maul that's my top top one. of all time. Qui-Gon. You said you said episode three. The Qui Gon. That's Obi- what I meant. You Qui-Gon said episode three Obi-Wan twice instead of episode one. Qui-Gon, for you, I, I know I did. For you, you're, I'm gonna. For you, you're saying Qui Gon and Obi Wan versus Darth Maul for number one. Then Luke versus episode six. Luke versus Vader, and then y- yes, the, and then, the battle on the Death Star two with yeah. the Emperor, and yeah. then uh, Mustafar from yeah. Revenge. Right. Anakin versus Obi Wan. Okay, I go um, number one. I go Mustafar. I go Obi Wan versus Anakin on Mustafar. Number two. I go Empire Strikes Back, uh, the Bespin, Luke versus Vader fight. That's mm-hmm. good. And then number three, I, I put four because I had a hard time dropping one of them down. At three, I put the the Rey and Kylo Ren fight from Force Awakens. That's a good one. And then at four, I put the Darth Maul, Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan mm. fight. 
I'm excited to put mine in there. I couldn't. I couldn't drop a. a I couldn't drop one of those. All four, four of Chris's are the Yoda versus Count Dooku fight. All right, guys, time no, to go. The Yoda, oh. the, the Yoda Palpatine fight from Episode Three, I just, where Yoda's was, flipping around. It's even <laughs> worse. I hate both of those fights. Anakin. Anakin Dooku. versus Dooku, I don't mind because he does the dual saber thing for him. <laughs> do it. And that do that it. was super badass. Do it. Um, do it. Do it. Do it. Just what do it. I? Mine. I'm going to start uh, at the bottom, which let me think. I've got. At the bottom, we're going to be here for. A few I'm going to I'm going to go from the bottom to the top. I'm only going to do. I'm trying to think whether I have three or four. Three. That I want to mention. Just pick three. You did. I did four. Yeah, I, I did three. three. He, had, he had three. I did four. I don't want to do three. All right, then I'll, do five. I think, I think I've got four. I'm not doing five. I just let me count them. Do all of the fights in the shows. And then, all right, I've got four. All right. All right. The fourth one I'm going to yeah. say. Number four. Four is uh, Revenge of the Sith, Anakin vs Obi Wan. Mm-hmm. I like I like it a lot, especially I mean. There's not a lot that I like about the prequels, uh, but they actually did manage to get some emotional weight behind the fight. I think that it went on. It got it was a little too long, and there are some parts that are kind of ridiculous with the the flipping and the and the, the twirling. Yeah. It's, it's a little over the top. Mm. I don't I don't I don't need that. I I prefer it when uh, the the Jedi fights are a bit more samurai like. Sure, whatever. Which is okay. What, so what's, which what's is what the, the Jedi were based on? Samurai. Don't rush me. I didn't rush you during your topic. That's because I said the three thing the things and then I moved on. It's, Can it's I remove hard. him from the channel? I know we just added him. He's the intern. We can't fire him. <laughs> go we can't we can too. We made this. Get me coffee. Taxes. Wait, That's I'm the intern. Works. Yeah, go send a fax. Go get yourself coffee. Get you coffee. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a little over the top, so I don't. That, that, that one's at the bottom for me, but I still really like it because I'm going to say one. Uh, the next up for me is uh, the Darth Maul fight in Episode One yeah. because cool it's, it's a double bladed lightsaber. Well, not even just he fights that, two people at once. It's a great fight. Phase. It's the best part of episode one. It's the only good thing in episode one. <laughs> except, ooh, except agreed. For the, except the best, the except best. for the pod race. Yeah, pod, pod race is great too. Uh, uh, hello, Jar Jar Binks. Um, you're fired. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're definitely fired. Next up from that is uh, the duel on Bespin, uh, Empire Strikes Back, Luke versus Vader. Uh, <laughs> there's so there's so much emotional weight behind every everything. Every hit is is particularly, and it's it's just so. Well crafted, and then of course you get the uh, the um, amazing uh, conversation with the two of them at the end. You get the hands, I am your father. Like all of that is just it's perfect. Everything about that is great. <laughs> and so uh, I still think that's the best movie in the series. And honestly, if I were if I were to look at it critically rather than personally, I'd say that's probably the best one in the entire Star Wars saga. However, my personal favorite one is Finn and Rey versus uh, Kylo Ren. Because you're seeing lots and lots of untrained people essentially taking up the mantle of uh, of who came before them, and uh, it's choreographed so well that you get so much information about these characters and their personalities and the stories and things going on without almost any dialogue happening. It's so well made. Yeah. Uh, just the just the the way that uh, like in the, both when uh, Kylo Ren is fighting both Finn and Rey. He starts out, you know, flaring a bit and kind of showing off, and then the moment that either of them strike him, his his stance and his fighting style change, and he gets more aggressive. Like the moment that Finn hits Kylo Ren, he takes him out. He was toying with him that entire time, just kind of messing with him. He's showing off. He's like, and he's trying to be like, you know, dear grand granddaddy Anakin Skywalker, and just all of these things. It's just brilliant. I love that fight. Yeah. I love the way it was choreographed. I love the way it was shot. It's beautiful to look at. I, it's my favorite one. It in makes the me excited for the new movie. So. Yes, especially now that they'll both have more training. Mm-hmm. I'm very interested to see how the how how well it's choreographed. And there's a very good chance that we're going to see Luke uh, pop the green lightsaber in this movie. You know where else there's a good chance of? There's a good chance you'll visit our Patreon. We have a Patreon, patreon.com backslash Save Point Productions. We That's also have social segue. media accounts. We have Twitters at Samewear Music at Save Point Chris at Save Point Productions. Uh, Caleb with a Twitch. Uh, twitch.com backslash Colonel Taylor. Yeah, I'm playing the camera. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't, subscribe. Uh, we got a little long-winded. We got a little angry. We had a lot of fun. Uh, it's okay, Sam. I love you. Uh, now, and we're going to go watch Cowboy Bebop now. Bye. Mm, hello. Oh, hello, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. I love you, Sam. I know I shout sometimes. Mm, delightful. And delete recording. Um... Yeah.